let's move on to Sandra with documentation split, ANSPO versus ANSPO core. Hello, sorry, trying to pull myself together here. All right. Hello, um, I just wanted to spend a, just a little bit of time kind of explaining what we did with the doc sites recently. Um, as we discussed previously in this session, we had um, a number of changes happening between Ansible as the package and Ansible um, base and Ansible core as deliverables. One of the impacts of that um, was that Ansible, the package, has a separate release train now from Ansible core. Um, and initially, they weren't synced up um, necessarily. We now are in an area where they will sync up a little bit better. But we basically have two different moving trains. And the documentation site was based on one. Um, if you look at the documentation URL, you will see a version number in there. If you look on the left-hand navigation, you'll also see a, a version option where you can choose which version of the documentation to match your Ansible version. Because they were releasing separately, we decided we needed to separate um, the doc site, so to speak, so that we can attach uh, information based on you know, which versions we're talking about. So if you go now to docs.ansible.com slash Ansible, you will see all the old Ansible releases that are still maintained. Um, I think 2.8 is still there. I'm not sure how much longer that lasts, but we got 2.8, 2.9, um, 2.10, and Ansible 3, which just came out recently. Uh, for the Ansible core train, we created a separate doc site, which I'll drop in, in the um, chat in a minute. But that is where the core documentation is. And it's similar ans similar URL, but it's um, Ansible-core. And then we have Devel and 2.10 up there to cover what is effectively Ansible base. Uh, the biggest differences um, between these two is that Ansible, the package, pretty much has all the documentation you're used to seeing. It covers everything in the package. The only thing that's not there is the roadmap for Ansible Core, because that's that's on the new site. Um, if you go over to the new site, the Ansible Core site, all the user guide, developer guide, et cetera, information is and community guide is still there. But the networking guide, the scenario guides are not there because they, they are not tied to Ansible Core releases. They're tied to collection releases. And in the future, we may have to do something else with those, but for now, they stay with Ansible, the package. And that's kind of the, that's the two main differences between it. We've, right now, we anticipate um, community is going to still heavily use the Ansible doc site that you're used to. That that's where everything that you, that you used to see is still there. Uh, we'll evaluate that as time goes by to find out if more people are actually using core and independent collections versus Ansible, the package. But that's kind of it's kind of where the split happened and why the split happened. Um, we have a few more things to clean up. The docs landing page doesn't reflect both of them yet, so we have to kind of shift that around a bit. But that's that's where we're at right now. I just kind of wanted to describe that so people were aware and see if there were comments, suggestions, anything from the community about that split. I showed, I showed the links. I'm not sure if those are the correct ones you mentioned. Um, let me check. In the chat. No questions for me, but uh, great work. Uh, it's been uh, quite done your the undertaking, so congrats on shipping that. Cool. Um, yeah, Carol, those are the correct links. And one of the things we're thinking about is kind of changing the colors between them, so it's obviously on a different one. So right now, they both look very similar. Um, so what we're thinking, maybe we'll change Ansible Core to black. I mean, we can't use Ansible Red, um, because that suggests supported upstream, uh, downstream versus upstream. Um, but you know, that's kind of the next thing with that. We'll, we'll change the color so it's a bit more obvious you landed on a different page. Uh, Anyone else have questions or? Comments. I know this was kind of 
very quick, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that that split is is out there and see what they thought about it. Just as an aside, one thing we'll be looking at probably doing late, I would say later in the year, and will be, um, is we're probably going to move the community documentation into its own section. At the moment, that's under Ansible Call, which historically was fine because that was the main documentation side, but it did mean that um, the Ansible Call version somehow affects how you contribute and stuff. So we're probably going to create a docs Ansible.com slash community, but we'll send out further information on that in the future. You know, one of the things that came up when we were talking about the doc site split is there was some strong feeling that we needed at least one site that had everything. Um, so that's why, you know, we hadn't at the moment considered taking the community guide and, and plopping it somewhere else. But you're right, there, there is no version associated with the community guide for the most part. It's not tied to Ansible the package, it's not tied to Ansible core, um, but we still have to discuss What's the impact if you go to Ansible, especially since we don't have a site search, you go to Ansible and you can't find um, community information. It's not gonna come up in the search because the search is tied to the doc site right now. Any other comments, suggestions, points of pain? Uh, someone posted in, in chat, what are we doing about the site search? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know if the current search engine we use is able to go across, be tied to the entire docs.ansible.com site or not. I haven't investigated that. It is a problem, definitely. And it's something, especially if we start separating things more that we have to solve. Maybe what, um what can the community do or how if they have some comments or suggestions what's the best way to reach the documentation team uh the best thing is irc um and there's the ansible docs channel that we're on you know daily so if, if we even if we're not online at that particular time you can post a comment there we can follow up or you can add it to the agenda for the um we usually have a meeting at this time actually on irc um where you can come in and, and you'll know that we're there and we'll have this discussion on whatever topic you want. But our agenda is open and you can add anything to it that you want. I guess in terms of what else the community do can help is if you start finding yourself flipping between doc sites or if you're doing if you're doing a Google search and you find out you're landing on the core docs and not the Ansible docs, let us know. I mean, there's not nothing we can particularly do about it, but it does suggest our guess that people are going to stick with Ansible, the package, may not be true. If you start seeing Google hits um, going over to core, they shouldn't be. And if anybody in the community knows a good way to do a site level search, let us know. I'm open to suggestions. I know we have an existing tool that we use. Um, per site, you know, per doc site, um, but not sure how that would work across everything or if it would work across everything. Um, edit on GitHub is there. Somebody again posted in comments about the edit on GitHub. Edit on GitHub still works for what we call the static RST files. Um, so the user guide, the community guide, the dev guide, it does not work for any plugins anymore. Um, we had to turn that off because all of those went to separate repos and we don't have a solution in mind yet for how to bring that back or if those repos allow direct edits. Um, so you won't see that anymore on any plugins or modules. All right, if there are no further questions for now, we can start the next break session, break period early. And um, we'll be back in about 14 minutes for actually the next documentation update. So about the service. So um, take a short break, stretch, and see y'all soon. The next session we'll have is Alicia, 
who will be sharing the documentation survey feedback. Yeah. Felicia. Let me try and get my... Uh, you should now be seeing a slide that says, yes. welcome, my name is Alicia. Yes? Okay. Yes. Awesome. Fantastic. Now we attempt to move. Oh, look at that. That even works. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night if you happen to be in a particularly unfriendly um, to this, this time time zone. Uh, my name is Alicia Cozine. Um, this is just my generic intro slide. So I've been working here at on the Ansible team at Red Hat since January of 2018. Um, moved into the lead role in June that year. And I am a Cozine on basically every platform that you would want to find me on. So pretty easy to remember, um, except for my last name being weird, but that's OK. Um, and I will post that again at the end. So anybody who wants to get in touch with me, you'll have another another chance. So this is just a quick presentation about the documentation user survey. Um, at Ansible Fest 2018, I stood up in front of a small audience and said that uh, we had great plans for the documentation and we were going to do a survey. Yes. Um, oh, yes, thank you. Somebody just messaged me that I forgot to change the Red Hat logo. You're not seeing the, the old Red Hat logo. I'll fix that later. Um, but just ignore it. Uh, so yeah, Ansible Fest 2018, I said we were going to do a survey. Um, we didn't <laughs> until uh, this past end of year 2020. So we finally implemented it and got it uh, out with Greg Sutcliffe's help. Thank you, Greg. Um, it was on SurveyMonkey. It ran for a little more than a month. Um, and I am hoping that we will do this annually so that we can start comparing results year over year and see if we're improving uh, and also gathering more ideas and information from the community. Um, so what did we get right in the survey? Uh, we did some stuff well. The survey was short. It was pretty simple to answer. It was open for long enough, but not so long that you know people got tired of it. We were getting responses pretty steadily through the period. Um, and it turned out it was well publicized. The, the biggest source of um, responses was from a banner on docs.ansible.com. So that's awesome. That means that a lot of the people who answered the survey answered it because they were actually using the documentation on that day. Um, it also happened to make me very happy. Um, it makes me happy to know that people are using the documentation and, and finding some worth in it. So uh, quick, quick question of the folks here. I don't know if we can do a raise hands thing or what, but um, did folks here respond to the survey? I can, I can do a poll really quick. Oh, that would be awesome. Thank okay. you, Carol. Yeah, just uh, did you or did you not respond to the survey uh, when it was open? Um, all right. We can see whether I'm right about it being publicized well. Uh, so what we could improve, we did make some mistakes. A <laughs> survey about the survey. Exactly. <laughs> we can get as meta as we like. Um, so uh, we did make some mistakes. Um, the, the, when we asked people about their role, we made two mistakes there. Um, we didn't allow people to pick more than one option. So we got a lot of people picking other and saying, well, I can't really boil it down to just one thing. I'm a developer and uh, you know. Uh, so that was a mistake. We didn't add DevOps, which a lot of people asked for. Um, I know there's controversy over whether that's really a role or not, but uh, apparently a lot of respondents felt that it was an easy way to describe what they did. Uh, and we didn't have it on there, so we'll add that for next time. Um, and then we added a question uh, toward the end about wh who do you work for? Um, do, you, do you work for Red Hat? Do you work for a Red Hat partner? Or do you work for, for a company that's not, you know, not related to Red Hat? 
Um, and we did get some feedback from folks saying, uh, what's this about? Why are you asking me this? Um, and that possibly we were, we intended to privilege um, responses from Red Hatters or from Red Hat customers, paying customers, that kind of thing. Actually, my intention in doing that was the opposite. Um, because I public or I publicized the survey on a lot of internal Red Hat channels, and because this was the first time we'd ever done something like this, I didn't know what kind of response rate we were going to get, and I was a little worried that some of our salespeople were going to go out and be salespeople, you know, and and talk it up and um, get a whole bunch of people from one of their companies to come and respond to the docs survey and basically swamp the results. So I wanted to make sure that we had a way of um, differentiating that and, um, uh, you know, making sure that that didn't happen. So I apologize to everyone who felt uh, some concern about that. We're gonna think about how best to present that next time. Um, and if anyone has ideas about how to make that clearer or another way to, um, to make sure that we're getting real community feedback, um, I'm all ears uh, for, uh, sorry, that is a bad, <laughs> bad English phrase to use uh, in international company. I would be very happy to hear all ideas that, that, um, that people have for improving this or any other element of the survey. Um, I see Greg Sutcliffe raised a hand. Do you wanna, you wanna jump in here, Greg? I just wanna say the question did what it meant to do. We could tell that they were not flooding the survey, um, not even slightly. Um, so it worked, we just need to word it better. Yeah, yeah, it did work. And, and I have to say we got, yeah, we got about 900 responses and the vast majority were community members or if they were Red Hat related, they refused, you know, they lied and refused to let us know that. Um, but I, I do think that we got real community feedback um, through this survey. So, but on the other hand, I don't mean to um, make anyone nervous about answering the questions or make them feel that we're, you know, in whatever way doing something uh, negative or nefarious, so. Um, so those were the main mistakes. Um, overall results of the survey, people were generally pretty darn happy. Um, people like the, the documentation, they use it. Um, we did try to, uh, well, I didn't try. Greg analyzed the results, um, looking at looking for differences in happiness. For example, if we wanted to know if network administrators were significantly more or less happy than other users with our documentation, um, or whether new users were significantly more or less happy, um, so that we can figure out where to focus our attention on the documentation. And you can look at this link and I'll pop it into chat too, if I can find it. Oh, thank you, Gundalo. Um, so Greg did a statistical analysis and you can read the details on his blog there. Um, but but the, the, the top line answer is not a lot of difference, not a huge gap between different kinds of users, different roles, um, uh, different goals in using the documentation or how long you've been using Ansible. Um, so a little bit of the nitty gritty here the top messages that we heard from people as far as what people who responded to the survey wanted us to do or do more of, the very top answer was what happened to the module index page. Um, and uh, that, uh, as those of you who've been following the project for a while may remember, that module index page when all the modules were in the Ansible Ansible repo, um, there was one page that had all the modules listed alphabetically. Um, it was a great resource. We knew that a lot of people used it, uh, probably pulled up the page and then control F searched for a module name as an easy way of getting to the module documentation. And oh my God, my cat is climbing 
the furniture. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, that went away when we moved to collections because we, at the beginning, we did not have a way of um, pulling that information from all the different repos and putting it into a single page. Um, we now have it again, um, thanks to some work by Felix Fontaine. And uh, I have two links here, which if um, nobody else, it looks like is jumping in to put them in the, in the chat. So let me see if I can, here we go. Here's the all modules one. And whoops, if I go back, this is the higher level index. Okay, back to my slides. Um, some other things that, that people told us about our documentation, uh, the site search doesn't work. This was not news to us. Um, most people come to specific pages in the documentation from a Google search. Um, improving the site search uh, would really help people is what we are hearing. And so we're going to dig into that. I know Sandra mentioned um, we, we have an internal tool that we use for the site search, which has not been optimized. And uh, we will start looking at that and seeing if we can respond to that feedback. Um, another thing that a lot of people said was um, finding things from the left-hand navigation from that table of contents uh, is not easy. It, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're gonna look at improving that. Um, and then the third thing that we heard, we asked specifically about um, the experience of contributing to the documentation, whether people had contributed, um, if not, what, why not? What was the problem? Um, and the message from that part of the survey was basically contributing is pretty easy, um, but a lot of people don't do it either because they don't have time or they don't think they have the right skills or anything to offer. Um, so we're gonna keep talking publicly and privately about uh, how even newcomers can help improve the documentation. In fact, in many ways, newcomers can improve the documentation more than experienced users um, because the documentation includes more uh, the experienced users often don't use large portions of the documentation because they already know that stuff. Whereas a new user is learning about Ansible and can help us make that material better. Um, thank you. That's it. Here's my contact info again, um, as I promised at the beginning. And does anyone have any questions, comments, ideas, suggestions? about the docs generally, about the survey? What did, did we get a, an answer on our poll about the survey? <laughs> Let me check. Uh, we only have six votes. So oh, yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people, how many people are on the call? Let's see. 49. Yeah, can, yes, we can do better than this. Look okay, at so there's 49 people. There's 49 people in the call. Let's call that 50. That means 12% have replied to the poll. If you take the same fraction as when in the main <laughs> survey, that would suggest that we had at least what's that? 12. If a thousand is 12%, it's like what, 10,000 users or so. Yeah. <laughs> Looking yeah. Through, through the we know it's a lot larger than that, right? Because we've got the, the the Adobe Web Analytics for for yeah. actually how many people use the docs. Um, so it's interesting. So already you've got a better fraction answering this survey than the bigger one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, be careful right. what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I will stop presenting. I'll also just make one last plug for the um, the documentation working group. We do meet, uh, as Sandra mentioned, every Tuesday. Um, we're about to change the UTC time again. We we do adapt a little bit to summertime, winter time. Um, and if you are interested in documentation, you can become part of the conversation 
uh, and influence the time we pick for our summer this year. So, um, and of course, uh, comments, questions, and general chat welcome in the Ansible Docs IRC channel at any time. Um, we do we do check it regularly, and um, yeah, get in contact. We're a fun bunch. All right, I will turn control back over to Carol. Thanks, Alicia. Um, I think we have actually about 10 minutes before the next session. So um, is there any questions or anybody just want to ask about general stuff? We can do that. Or if civil is on. Uh, ask some pointed questions. Are, are people finding this useful? Uh, let's go for the main question first, right? Give us some, give us some feedback, especially if it's no, right? Because we're happy to change the form. And in fact, yes, yes makes me feel happy, but no gives me something to work with, right? So, um, you know, what 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 would people like to see from these sessions and? Are they getting it? It's the format, right? Would people like something that's more interactive? How could we make it more interactive? How do you just make Underlow stop asking questions? You know, maybe that's a useful aim for the next time. I, I think it's the aim, Carol, that we're going to do these quarterly, roughly. Yeah, I mean, we, we want to have at least three times a year. I mean, we did three last year, so it would be nice to keep that momentum. Uh, but if we want to have one every three months, we can probably do that as well. It's just that usually December time frame, there's a lot of people on holidays and, you know, so it's kind of hard to do that. Right. Yeah, the right, right. I, I misremembered it was three last year. Yeah. Yeah. And if Ansible Fest is in October, then usually we will attach one to that. So, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, how are we doing on the polls? And we've got seven minutes before the next. So we've gone up a bit. So yeah, just as a reminder, on the where the chat window is on the top right, there is a triangle, circle, square button. If you click that and then polls, um, please do take the. 90 seconds to just complete the, the six polls we've got there. Feedback's really important to us. Good morning. Are we still, are we still doing a hackathon tomorrow, Kandela? Uh, yeah, so it's going to be sort of like a an open office hours drop into IRC. It, it won't be on on video. I don't believe Carol. I think it's just going to be on IRC. So if you're working on a PR or being interested in some of the stuff we're talking about today, basically we're on roughly the same hours as as today. We're going to have people available uh, at your disposal. So like, you know, hopefully people have learned a lot today and can come up with some really awkward questions and, and come and ask us. You know, we're there to, to help you, right? If you're interested in how to contribute or got a PR that's stuck or I'm not sure how to code something or interested in setting a meetup or anything to do with the Ansible and wider Ansible community, and that includes things like Ansible Lint, Molecule, um, come and chat to us. Yep, it's not going to be a video conference like this one, but um, we want to set aside the day where we will be available for, for the community. I mean, in general, <laughs> a lot of us hang out on RC all the time, but you know, to, to actually uh, dedicate some time, especially right after the Contributor Summit, where all these topics are fresh in your mind, so you can you know give some thought to it and then share your questions and feedback and everything, and also perhaps work, work on some issues together during, during the hackathon tomorrow. I guess since it's so quiet, I might as well go ahead and talk. Yeah, sure, please go ahead. <laughs> All right, uh, so I guess we're moving into the, the Ansible core portion, uh, Ansible 2.11, and give you guys a little bit of insight into 
what I do know for 2.12. Uh, so for 2.11, we had a couple of items on our to-do list uh, for the roadmap, which were to add uh, role argument spec functionality uh, to improve the, uh, looks like someone just posted the roadmap in, to improve the UX of the Ansible Galaxy collection install command, specifically to add upgrade functionality to sort of, a sort of um, mimic uh, pip. And we actually switched over to using uh, the new Python resolve lib, which pip will be using going forward as its uh, dependency resolver. And the one other big ticket item was to make modifications to Ansible tests to do split uh, controller and target testing. As of right now, the way that it works is the controller is the target with Ansible test, which means that we have to, we've been pulling along Python 2.6 support in the controller, even though we didn't officially support it because in order to test a Python 2.6 remote, we also had to support Python 2.6 on the controller. So that work is not done and will not actually uh, land for Ansible test in the 2.11 release. We're going to continue working on that and get it merged as soon as it's done, but it'll be post 2.11 and actually in the 2.12 release. Um, one of the things that this gives us is aside from not having to pull along Python 2.6 support, we're also going to be uh, switching to full-time Python 3.8 requirement in 2.12. So in order to do that, of course, we have to get the split, con split controller stuff working. Um, so 2.11 will not be dropping Python 3.8 support. That's... Um, uh, a soft requirement. It sounded like Nits wanted to. I just said, and just to clarify, that's just three eight for the controller, not yep. not remote targets. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So just controller side, not targets. Targets will continue to support Python two point six as the minimum, and at some future date, we will discuss when we need to move that goalpost a little bit. Uh, farther so that maybe 2.7 is the minimum instead of 2.6. Uh, it was also just mentioned in chat that one of the other things that we've uh, made a modification to is uh, in how uh, modules uh, have the ability to respawn now, kind of like how we do interpreter discovery, modules can uh, opt into behavior to respawn themselves to try to find an interpreter that has the correct dependencies needed uh, to operate. So a big example would be something like the yum or DNF modules or the apt module, packaging modules specifically because of the OS uh, packages only give uh, Python support usually to the default system Python and not just any random Python you have installed. Um, so with moving the minimum required eventually to 3.8. And the fact that we're also not packaging uh, RPMs for RHEL for Python 3.6, uh, we needed a way for modules to be able to respawn to pick up the correct Python uh, for doing those operations. So if you look at some of those changes, we'll basically loop through attempting to find, uh, see if the current Python has the uh, Python module needed, and if not, respawn or check another Python and eventually respawn executing the module under the correct Python interpreter. Um, and then SE Linux was one of the other difficult uh, problems that we had. And instead of using um, lib SE Linux Python for our SE Linux um, interactions, we're now using C types to directly interact with uh, SE Linux from Python rather than using the, the Python library in between, which should eliminate some problems. And potentially as of later today, uh, we'll be merging a PR to make uh, imports in modules um, uh, optional.
So if they're nested either inside of an if statement or in a function or in um, or in a try except, uh, those imports are optional and the module uh, Ansible's module builder will now allow those to be optional once that PR gets merged. Um, I just did the review on it this morning. So, uh, and Nit said he can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Nitz, you can go ahead and do that before I, I jump into anything 2.12 related. OK, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, James Cassell just asked if there, what are the drawbacks of using C types to talk to SE Linux. Um, the, the only real thing is just that, you know, obviously, the libse Linux Python uh, provides a very large surface area over the, you know, a very large wrapper surface area over the SE Linux uh, stuff that is provided by the underlying libse Linux uh, C library. Uh, and, and there are objects and some other things that that we aren't providing any of that. Like the base, the stuff that, that Ansible itself uses for SE Linux, like in the core, in, in like basic.py, uh, and is very small. Like we had, I think there's like, there's less than 10 calls that we had to make, and we weren't using any of the object stuff for that. Um, so rather than trying to, we actually tried a couple other approaches before we went to C types and C types ended up being just the, the easiest way to get the thing done. Um, you know, those, th those things haven't really changed in the, uh, it's funny because if you look at the, the code around this stuff, a lot of it still had Michael DeHaan's name on it. Like those lines of code have literally not been touched in like eight years. So uh, it was, it was a pretty straightforward thing to cut it over uh, to the C types wrapper for the stuff that's in basic.py. Um, and then for the rest of it, uh, so for the things that are in like ansible.posix, those things will need to be updated to use the new module respawn functionality to get uh, SE Linux, uh, you know, to pick up SE Linux. But especially for the stuff that was in basic.py, uh, module respawn was just not practical because we don't know who all is using that, right? Like we don't know what their Python requirements are. When we're talking about the core modules, we know that there's no specific Python depths other than SE Linux. But that's not necessarily the case for any arbitrary other module that someone may have written. So having that um, having that SE Linux just kind of work in whatever Python you happen to bring was really important, which is why we ended up doing the C types thing. It was just kind of the fastest path to that. Yeah, and I guess to answer that last question, SE login, SE boolean, those would need respawn or to either make sure that you've got the right Python interpreter set or to also do the, uh, to import the new SE Linux compat library. And that's kind of where, what spawned us to really work on the optional imports is so that something like the Ansible POSIX uh, collection could continue working with 2.9 with the, the current behavior, but then for uh, like 2.0, 11 could also utilize the new behavior. So once we get that taken care of, uh, get that merged, then we can we can work with the Ansible POSIX maintainers as well, or just you know submit a PR and get that that merged for those to be able to to function that way. Yeah, and obviously we need to get the 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 intent is to backport that optional module utils behavior back to two nine because otherwise yeah, it's kind of pointless until until that's done. Yep. Once once that happens, then yeah, those uh, those collections can be updated and for you know as long as they're running on a current version of two nine that has that backported feature, um, <laughs> then the same collection can work all the way from two nine to two eleven and and beyond. Uh, so I guess as far as 2.12 is concerned, we haven't necessarily fully completed our planning for what 2.12 is. We've been working between product and um, you know community and other key stakeholders to determine what that roadmap is going to look like. I think from a user-facing feature perspective, there's probably not going to be a whole lot that happens in 2.12. Um, one of the things that we're probably going to focus on is doing some just Python 3 updating since Python 3.8 becomes the hard dependency from the, for the controller in Ansible Core 2.12. Um, 
other than that, uh, I think we're going to be working on some the action groups modules module defaults. So that's about the, the closest probably to a user face, facing feature. But other than the continued work that we're doing on Ansible test for split controller and um, the Python 3 stuff, there's probably not a whole lot there that's going to be of huge um, uh, user facing importance. Although forcing everyone to switch to Python 3 will definitely have a performance improvement from the controller perspective for people. Anyone have any questions or anything so far? No pitchforks or? Uh, you, you, mentioned, uh, so you mentioned performance in Python 3. Uh, do you have any data or uh, study to back that up? Or are you stock talking Python in general? Uh, well, so I don't have any anything published or anything documented. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Some people may know, but I've spent a, a fairly large portion of of my time uh, working on uh, core doing performance work, um, and so it's it's evidence that I have you know seen. Uh, I don't have a specific documented place on where you're going to see more performance improvements over Python 2. Memory utilization is one thing uh, that is going to be better on Python 3 that we've noticed specifically around uh, using a queue and multiprocessing. Uh, as well as there's uh, performance improvements in serializing objects that are passed over queues for dealing with uh, multiprocessing as well. So those are just a couple of the places that I can speak to from, you know, things that I've worked on in the past month or so. But no, I don't have any specific uh, document that lays out all of those places. Okay, thanks. Simple, there's a question in, in IRC. Oh, sorry, I'm. That's all right, I know it's it's difficult with Google Chat and IRC. Yeah, yeah, two, two different places. Um, I guess hope that Ansible Core 2.12 will also have more role docs things. Uh, I don't know specifically, there's not been anything really discussed from a perspective of, uh, or at least that I'm aware of on what documentation we need to extend more there. Not that I'm against it, and I imagine that at least most of that work would be fairly minimal in the scope of most of the things that land on the roadmap. Uh, as far as test and filters documentation, that's something that we've been talking about for a while. It's just it's not something that had been prioritized, but I think, Potentially with 2.12, we'll probably have maybe some freedom to go work on that um, to, in, in, I guess, full disclosure, uh, we're sort of loaning out some developers from the core team to work on some product level um, tooling as well, which is sort of going to impact the core team's, uh, I guess, ability to handle larger workflow work uh, workloads in the 2.12 release. So I guess we'll have to see where it goes and what we have time there for. But it's uh, at least from my perspective of uh, coming up with the roadmap and uh, creating project teams to work on it, those are not necessarily items that are going to be scoped for a, for a full project team to work on. but. We can definitely talk about uh, trying to include some of that work in there as well. I don't know exactly. We've had multiple discussions about how to handle docs for uh, tests and filters. And I guess to frame that a little bit for anyone who's not clear on it, most of our plugins are a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that the Python file and the plugin is a one-to-one. -one. So a lookup plugin is implemented in a single file. Uh, a callback plugin is implemented in a single file. Um, whereas with tests and filters, they kind of act as each 
filter and test is a part of a larger plugin file. So there could be hundreds of tests or filters provided by a single plugin file. And our current way of documenting via the documentation uh, variable that houses YAML isn't built to work for that. Uh, so we've discussed doing some things like sidecar documentation, which would be you know files that live adjacent to the Python that are just YAML themselves that allow us to do that documentation, or potentially using Python doc strings in the actual Python file to provide those um, that documentation. But we haven't really come to any agreement on which way is the best way forward. Um, yeah, and like uh, Nit said, sidecar documentation is is a win for non-Python plugins as well, which means that you don't also have to have a .py file that has YAML embedded in it. Yeah. You shouldn't have to use Python doc strings. You can just do a list inside of or dict inside of a documentation variable if you want to keep it in the Python file. Yeah, I don't know that we support addict for that currently. But yeah, I think we would yeah. probably move to something other than a Python file for the sidecar documentation if we extend that further. Yeah. <laughs> Less a question than more a, a statement of hope. Yeah, so we'll see what we can do about that. I'll put it on my agenda to discuss, you know, a little bit more internally. And if you want, feel free to add it to um, the core IRC agenda as well. And, and let's just say that some of the other work that's happening, uh, it align some of the other work that's happening where the, the core is loaning resources to other teams to do, it fits in nicely with and more to come. Yeah, and another thing that we're kind of going to be working on in uh, through the 2.12 release, and this is not a Ansible core feature, but the at least some of the core team will be working on some ad hoc uh, development tasks to write some tooling around migrating to collections. So many months ago, I had written a proof of concept tool just as a, a side project to you know have a little fun with for you know basically pointing to a role in a collection in this roughly 200 lines of code, we'll copy over the, the role into a collection, renaming files, moving files into the correct places. So we'll see where exactly that goes, but that's something that we plan on working on and making available to the larger community instead of just sitting in a gist somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to read multiple places where people are talking to me. So apparently Gundalo has difficulties listening and, and typing at the same time. <laughs> to be honest, just typing by itself is, is difficult enough as well. It's mostly British trying to write American <laughs> um, But hey, we have open source meeting notes in the HackMD, so anyone's welcome to to put stuff in and to say civil confirmed he would definitely do X and, and Matt Davis agreed or whatever. It's the joy of open source. And yeah, so we've got about another three minutes on this topic before I, I guess we do some form of break. So if anyone has any more questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, I mean, like, does anyone think there should be anything else on the roadmap or questions about what's going to happen in Ansible 2.15 or sort of longer? Yeah, well, I guess you mentioned 2.15, and that, that brings up uh, something for me in the fact that uh, so uh, Ansible 2.9 goes security only uh, once we release 2.11. Um, our current plan is with 2.9, although 2.9 um, product support ends in about a year, uh, 2.9 uh, 
um, will be supported as part of other products that utilize it. So think of like Tower 3.8. Tower 3.8 can potentially still use uh, Ansible 2.9 until Tower 3.8 goes end of life. So we'll be extending the security only phase of 2.9 until roughly the release of Ansible Core 2.15. Uh, and no, so any, as of now, there are no, so we have no plans of accepting any new backported things that are not security related past the 2.11 release. So the, um, the optional module imports will go in before uh, 2.11 is released and then 2.9 for the remainder of its life will be security only, basically, to support those uh, longer um, life cycles that some of the other products have. And then, uh, in addition, um, I've been I've been working on um, standardizing our release schedule. So our release schedule should be basically every six months going forward, with April and October releases. But I'm still waiting to get final approval from the hundred or so people that need to weigh in on that. Uh, I, got, I got a question. It's not mine, but it's one I've seen. Is there any plans to uh, rename the Ansible repo to Ansible core? There are no uh, plans to do so. Um, I guess for one, it's a little bit complicated because the Ansible core package provides the actual underlying Python Ansible package, even though, or the Ansible uh, module, even though the Ansible package exists. So it's a, it's a little, it's a little complicated there, but no, there are no plans to rename the repository. Thanks. Thoughts on the Ansible core package moving to, I don't know, strict sender or whatever it's called of major.minor. Yeah, we haven't, I mean, we've discussed it, that it would be a nice thing to potentially have Simver in the future. Um, I don't know, I just read a, I just read an interesting blog post the other day that Simver will not save you. Uh, so, I mean, we're not necessarily in a hurry to, to jump to Simver. It probably makes it a little more, oh, look, there it is. Uh, so Sfat just posted it in uh, the chat here in Google Meet. Um, but it, it probably makes it easier for some people to make a, a assumptions based off of the versioning. Uh, we're not planning to use that version jump to do anything like we did for Ansible 2.x, where we effectively rewrote the large majority of the underlying code for the engine. Um, so we're not planning to use that as a crutch to just go rewrite a whole bunch of things. Our plan is effectively to uh, smaller incremental changes that allow us to effectively over several releases get to that point where we're kind of rewriting code, but doing so in a backwards compatible way. Um, but no, at the moment, we don't have any plans about when that would happen or that we're explicitly doing it. So like I just mentioned, I've already planned out sort of to what 2.15 looks like, largely because of the 2.9 deprecation period or when it will go end of life. Yeah, that's good. And I, I, I haven't heard about, even if it does happen, it wouldn't be like Ansible 1 to Ansible 2, where platform porting. I think we've yeah, we have we have that. this tendency. Yeah, we have this tendency of saying, "Oh, that's a 3.0 thing," and that's not necessarily uh, meaning that it will land in 3.0. But sort of in order to easily enact that change, we're looking at a, a rewrite level event type of thing, which would probably result in us having to come to grips with uh, how to deal with the versioning of that which like, let's say that we wanted to rewrite the variable manager. Variable manager is always a hot topic that we have internally about its performance and just some of the things that, that we deal with there. So if we wanted to make the variable manager more performant and it's gonna require a fairly large rewrite. How do we handle that in a way that's 
not backwards incompatible? Do we have to make it backwards incompatible? How do we adjust the API version? So we'll we'll sort of see see where we go, but we haven't reached a point where we're like, we definitely need a 3.0. So if we go with 3.0, it'll just be because we decided to change how we handle versioning and not because we've decided to rewrite 50% of the code. All right, um, I think we are quite oh, we're a few minutes um, past the uh, allotted time, but uh, thank you so much for the, the discussing this 2.11 and 2.12 and going forward. Yeah, please continue the discussions on chat and IRC as usual. Uh, we will take a break now because I think for several of us, it has been a really long day and we do have still five more sessions to go. So take a good rest. Uh, it will be until half past the hour, and uh, I'll set a timer for 21 minutes. Thank you so much. Got to go. Thanks very much, everyone. I'll see you again. Thanks.